after the incident, Deputy Waldron gave a statement to investigators. He said that he called for a marked squad car because he saw Mr. Heilman's vehicle swerving and traveling at an excessive speed. He also saw him drive up uh, Fireman's Hill, which is not legal. When he saw the vehicle again at the apartment building, he saw Mr. Heilman, he saw Mr. Heilman standing outside facing him with, with his arms up as if Mr. Heilman was signaling something to him. Deputy Waldron got out and approached Mr. Heilman. As he approached, he saw Mr. Heilman look down at his badge and his gun several times. He told Mr. Heilman that he was driving recklessly and he demanded to see his driver's license. Mr. Heilman refused, responding with an expletive and turning and walking away. Deputy Waldron tried to restrain Mr. Heilman by using a wrist lock maneuver, but Mr. Heilman pulled away aggressively and turned and faced Deputy Waldron. <coughs> Deputy Waldron told Mr. Heilman that he was under arrest and told him to get down on the ground. Mr. Heilman did not comply, so Deputy Waldron then tried to strike him with a closed fist. Mr. Uh, Mr. Heilman ducked, causing Deputy Waldron to miss. Deputy Waldron then grabbed Mr. Heilman in a bear hug and both men fell to the ground. Deputy Waldron was on top and in control momentarily, but then he felt Mr. Heilman switch into an offensive rather than resi resistive mode, and he heard Mr. Heilman say, quote, all right, now you're gonna get it, mother, expletive deleted. Mr. Heilman was then able to spin away and, put, and he put Deputy Waldron in a headlock with Deputy Waldron on his hands and knees and with Mr. Heilman's legs sp spread out far behind him. Deputy Waldron said that the airflow, that his airflow was being restricted because uh, Mr. Heilman had his arms around his neck, and that he began to see stars and that he feared that he would soon lose consciousness. He then looked down and saw that his gun and his holster had come off his belt and were laying separated from each other on the ground. He didn't know whether they had fallen out on their own or whether Mr. Heilman had knocked them out. Unable to break loose from the headlock, he feared that he would lose consciousness, and with his gun present, he feared for his life. Deputy Waldron then picked up his gun and began shooting. He, he fired the first shot when he was still on the ground with Mr. Heilman on top of him. He didn't know whether this bullet hit Mr. Heilman. Deputy Waldron then shot three more times as he was getting up, and then he could see Mr. Heilman bleeding. Mr. Heilman walked backwards and hit the apartment building. Deputy Waldron ran to his vehicle and called for medical assistance. Then he went to tend to Mr. Heilman. Emer emergency personnel came, but they were unable to revive Mr. Heilman. After the incident, investigators noted that Deputy Waldron had three linear abrasions on the front of his neck and three large dark bruises consistent with finger marks on the inside of his right bicep. He also had a lighter bruise on the inside of his left bicep. Other law enforcement officers who spoke with Deputy Waldron after the incident reported seeing redness around his neck. <laughs>